Hi, Kimberly. It's great to connect with you, and I do appreciate you taking the time to watch this. So I just wanted to quickly go over how you can design a website that is not only stylish and offers a great user experience, but at the same time generates revenue for the business. Now, not having a site built is not a problem. Actually, in some cases, it's an advantage because it sometimes it saves you the expense of both time and money to either rebuild it or sometimes start over completely. So the key to your site creating revenue by, is by generating new customer leads for your business. Now this is accomplished by having your site appear in the organic search results. So to demonstrate this, what I've done is just a quick search for interior design in Freeport. And I've taken some of the top uh, listings and top companies in the area. And for comparison purposes, what I've done is just taken all their websites and I put them all into this tool that I use. And it shows me all the information that Google finds on their site that it uses to determine their position in search results. And then also rates its strength and trust on a scale of 1 to 100. So you can see just based on the top few sites that are companies that I selected, uh, it does vary quite greatly in some of these numbers. But let me just briefly go through what these numbers mean and then how things on your site can affect this so that we can keep that in mind for the overall build out uh, and the ranking of the site in the future. So when Google is looking to determine in what order to rank a website, it uses two different factors. The first is what's called the authority or trust that it has in your site. Now this basically boils down to a popularity contest because this authority is gained when other domains or websites refer back to yours and then they create a link called a backlink. And now Google uses those to build trust because others are basically vouching for you. So to give you an example, if say the, the local news station did an article on their website and it was the top 10 best interior designers in your area, and in that article, the reader could click on a link and it would bring them to your website, that's considered one backlink. Now, these types of backlinks can come from many different types of websites. So blogs, editorials, any kind of guest posting, press releases. One very strong and important type is what's called a citation. Now, a citation is any time that your name, address, and phone number appear in an online directory. Those include Yelp, Yellow Pages, Better Business Bureau. Uh, the good news about these is they're usually always free. It just takes some time to find them, register your business, and then input the information exactly that's shown in Google. So just based on these numbers, you can see uh, how much trust and authority that Google is placing in these websites based on the number of other websites that link back to theirs and the number of links they're created. But obviously, just by the fact of how the, the numbers vary greatly, it's not just a matter of the quantity of these links. The quality has a lot to do with it as well. So certain links will come back to spammy websites, especially ones that are outside the United States or that aren't relative to your service industry. Google is going to weight those differently. So the key here is to make sure that we're linking back to websites that are highly authoritative and trustworthy, but like I said, relative to the services that you offer in your industry itself. Uh, another factor here is Google wants to see progression. So this company has you know 53,000 links, which almost sounds like an insurmountable amount to get to compete with. But as you can see here, they were basically all created in a very short amount of time, and then nothing has happened since, and they're actually just dropping off. What Google really wants to see is slow, steady, organic growth. You know, it could have a little a few dips here and there, uh, but big, large jumps uh, and things that fall off, Google takes that into consideration as well. The second factor for ranking a website is the content on the page. So if we take a look in here, these are all the keywords and phrases that are being typed into Google search that are being found on this website, as well as the volume, the number of times per month they're being searched. So this is where we do a lot of keyword research to find all the highest volume keywords relative to the services that you offer and then make sure that those are being included on the site. So for instance, interior design Destin, Florida, that's you know, about, about a half an hour away from your location, that's being searched 60 times per month. Now, if your website was on the first page of Google search, those 60 people per month will be seeing your site. Google Analytics estimates that 10% of total search volume converts into a lead for the business when your website is ranked at the top of the page. Uh, so that means of those 60 people, let's say six of them 
are either giving you a call or submitting a form submit email through the contact form on the website. Now, depending on the close rate for conversions for customers that actually uh, become clients, uh, and obviously the, the scope of the job varies greatly, uh, but you can just see how the, the sheer volume of leads coming in per month can definitely help add up to some revenue at the end of the month at the end of the year, and that's just for one keyword phrase. So then we re repeat that same process for all the highest volume keywords relative to your services and the areas you want to serve and make sure that those can be found on the site so you can rank for them. Now there is a formula that Google uses to find these words on the site. So if we take a look here at uh, the same website, as far as layout goes, um, Google doesn't really care too much about the layout of the site. It's a computer, so all it's going to do is come in and basically read all the words and count them. Uh, just one quick note, as, just while I see it here, um, a majority of people are searching on a mobile device nowadays, so we want to make sure that the page is mobile optimized. So you can see here that this link is clickable to send them an email, however the, the phone number is not, so which means in a, in a mobile format somebody would actually have to manually dial this phone number. We want to make sure that they can just hover over it and they can click it or hit the screen with their thumb and it automatically puts this phone number into their phone and all they have to do is hit send. Uh, so mobile optimization is a big thing right, right about now. But as far as Google is concerned, it's going to come in and it's going to basically read and count all the words on the page. Now it's doing this because it assumes that the more information you have on the page, the more of an expert you are in your field and then the more likely it is to recommend you. Now, as a general rule, we usually recommend right around a thousand words on a home page. Reason being is as Google is counting the words and reading them, it's searching for the keywords. So all those words and phrases that are being typed in. Now this is where the number of words on the page comes into play because you're really only allowed to have one of those keywords for about every 100 to 150 words of text on the page. So the more services or locations or keywords in general that you want to be found for means the more content that you have to add to the site. Now, even further than that, over the last few updates, since Google is really pushing quality content, the 100 to 150 words of content actually have to be speaking directly or describing that keyword itself. So if you're trying to talk about a specific aspect of interior design, uh, whether it be like paint, or wall decor or furniture, the corresponding content has to be directly relating to that same subject because it's reading it in order to qualify that keyword. Now, we don't want the site to be extremely bulky uh, and, and basically read like a book. So, I mean, there are a lot of ways that you can hide content. Uh, this is a good one right here. We make these what they're called accordions, they're drop down menus. So that way you can put the heading, put the keyword in here, and if people want to read more about it, they can open it up to look at it. However, it's not bogging down the entire site where it makes it look like all they're doing is reading because that's really not going to help convert traffic on the website. However, all that information is being read by Google and that's the most important thing because then it qualifies that keyword and it allows you to come up in the search results. So when people do do a search, the first thing that they'll see is this map pack. This is your, powered by your Google business profile. So you want to make sure you're filling out that information in there as much as possible, trying to get some reviews. Uh, this is the, a big area where you want to get as many of those citations, your name, address, and phone number. You want to appear in more directories than anybody else on this list. Uh, another really good modifier for this is Google Rewards Activity. So you want to be constantly adding photos to your profile. Uh, photos should be geotagged and located so that way Google can understand where they're taken from and understand your service area. Uh, but then also just making posts and updates on a regular basis so you're posting more than anybody else here or at a, a higher frequency. Now underneath that, this is what we call the organic search results. So this is where the more authority or trust that Google has in your site, the higher up on the list you're going to rank. So this is where getting more of those links or referrals from other websites is how you climb and outrank the competition. So that way you're one of the first clicks and you'll end up being one of the first calls whenever somebody is searching for whatever services that you want to be found for. Now, I hope this information was helpful and it just shows you how you can scale some of the online presence just through uh, ways you can optimize the website. But, you know, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, if you want me to go into any further details. We can talk about, you know, some of the services or the things you wanted to target and some of the goals. And then I can do some research on my end to find out, you know, what exactly it would take for you to reach that. So I do appreciate your time and look forward to speaking with you.